Hey, hey, good morning. <laughs> that bird is very loud. The birds are very active this morning. How are you, how are you? I finally slept last night, even though my watch says I didn't, I, I did. I mean, I slept not enough, but better than I have been sleeping. Um, so that is good, but I almost feel more tired. Do you ever, guys ever feel like when you actually finally get sleep, like you're more tired than you were like when you weren't sleeping? I, I, these baseball practices, these late night baseball practices are killing me. Like it's midnight for me, but I am, I'm not a midnight goer to better, <laughs> but I am just not. That is, I like to go at 10, 11 is like when I'm really wild and stay up late is 11 but it's like twice a week. So I gotta adjust. And like we were talking about yesterday, I'm just gonna think, well, the universe is leading me somewhere with this. It's teaching me something, right? So say hey as you're jumping on and my camera just flipped again. I don't know why. I think it's fine on your end. For me, I'm sideways. So um, <clears throat> welcome to another move session. As we get started, just Nice, gentle, easy, uh, relaxed, kind of loosening up. You know, it's interesting because I was telling you my son has a new baseball coach. He's from America. He's from the States. He moved up here for love four months ago, which puts us in the spring. From He moved here from Miami. So he was telling us he's lived in Miami, Tampa, Dominican Republic, it's where he played baseball. I'm like, dude, you haven't, you haven't lived through a Canadian winter yet. <laughs> Let's see how that one goes. Anyway, I th apparently he, like many, many, many years ago, lived in Ohio. So I guess he, he's aware of what winters are like. But anyways, I digress. So what I was gonna say is he, every single parent, every single kid, Everybody just freaking loves this guy. He's one of those people, he, like, you just want him to, to like you, <laughs> to approve of you. He, he's hard on the kids, like he, I watched him over and over crush their soul, he makes them run, oh my god. Like, he won my heart. Their first practice uh, a couple nights ago, they ran the whole time. The shell shock looked on some of their faces. Because let me tell you, baseball kids do not run. And baseball coaches in Canada do not run them. Um, there's this weird disconnect, and I don't understand it, between fitness and conditioning and elite sports. Like, you're supposed to be an elite level athlete. Like, that's what their category is called. It's called elite baseball. If you're an elite athlete, you should be in shape. I don't understand, which you should have to run. Like, anyway, that's a whole nother thing, but she made them run the whole hour. My kid was fine with it. There was some serious shell shocked faces. Like, like, like they had just been through Navy SEALs, which is really far fetched. But anyway, um, and then last night they had to do a lot of running, but they did a practice, but this practice was like, boom, 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 boom. Anyways, I totally like off on a tangent. What I wanted to share with you was that one of the things that he said to them that he is going to be very forceful and relentless about is their warm up. 20 minutes of warming up to loosen the joints, to prepare the body for the workout. He said, I will never sacrifice your warm up. I will sacrifice batting practice. I will sacrifice uh, something else, I can't remember. <laughs> Swinging the bat a few extra times is not going to improve you as an athlete. Proper warm up will improve you as a ball player. And so I bring that up because we do a proper warm up in here every single day. And uh, I don't know, that was my point. <laughs> is that as we got started, so we're going into round two of the warm up right now. So we're picking up the intensity a little bit. For, for if you're new, if you're joining me for the first time, or um, I mean, that's really all. If you're joining me for the first time, end of sentence. 
you don't have to increase the intensity each round. You can keep it at low, no impact. I want you to know that you can do so with the whole warm up. The entire warm up, you, or sorry, the entire workout, you can drop the intensity to whatever level you need, whether it's right now in your life or whether it's just today because you're having an off day. Um, you can drop to low intensity, drop to no impact, or you can follow what I'm doing. Um, but the importance of the warm up is to listen to your body, move with your body, allow your body to make those adaptations as you go into like a higher energy output, higher level of effort. The more, like literally, this is kind of a people don't do this. Like I, don't, I see this with lots of exercise classes. The one. The one exercise program that I used to do years ago in Sanity, half the workout was the warm up. The warm up was like it was very thorough, it was intense, but it was it was super like effective. And it's like when I train runners, I have to beat them over the head, their heads with the fact that your warm up and cool down are so important, right? They will dictate the quality of your your actual session, right? So never scrimp on the warm up and listen to your body. What is your body trying to tell you? Are you stiff? Like, am I gonna lie, I'm a little bit sore from this week. My body is, I, I don't know, is anybody else sore from yesterday? Like, I don't know if it's just my body's not ready for kind of real <laughs> effort yet. I, I ran twice, my old kind of standard loop, um, which is quite hilly, which means a combination of hiking and, and running. Um, I don't feel stuck anywhere, so that's good. So I'm taking note of how does my body feel. Today I just feel stiff and heavy. Not so much sore, but just I can feel that I did something. Um, is that how you guys are feeling, or is that just me? <laughs> like I said, I feel like part of me is ready to get back to my old routines, and then part of me is like, no, my body's not quite ready yet. You know, sometimes the one thing, I try to teach clients this. This is another really hard sell of a lesson. We don't really know what's going on on the inside. Like it's kind of like being a detective, taking the clues that our body gives us on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Like things like uh, fatigue, soreness, um, indigestion, bloating, inflammation, uh, IBS, like, I feel like what differentiate those who are successful with their health, fitness, weight loss efforts and those who aren't is very small, as we know, very small percentage of people are successful. Success comes from being that detective and taking those clues that your body's giving you and going looking within to see like what's happening on the inside. So where I was going with that is Outwardly, I feel fine, you know, but my sleep, or I'm more sore after workouts than I normally would be, are clues that maybe the inside of my body is still recovering, still recuperating. I don't know what's happening in my bones, in my joint, in my connective tissue, my skeletal system, like. I have learned the hard way that the more astute and connected that we can become to knowing what our normal is, right? Like nor knowing what does feeling good feel like, which honestly, a lot of us don't know. And I, I'm guilty of that myself. Like during COVID, I accepted a far lower standard of what feeling good was for me, right? If you've ever felt, if you've ever been in great shape, 
been really healthy in life, you know what feeling good feels like. That should be our standard. That should be the bar, right? But often we're kind of willing to accept <laughs> a lower level because we're like, yeah, I feel fine. Do you feel fine? Right? And so having kind of that benchmark, raising that bar of how, how you feel. Three things I always encourage clients to assess. How's your energy? How's your sleep? How's your mood? If those three things aren't a tick, 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 right? Like you're not kind of nailing off some things needs your attention, right? That's all. So maybe, maybe you need to drink more water. Maybe you need to get more sleep. Maybe something you're doing, like drinking wine, is impeding your sleep, which is impeding everything else, right? So being honest with yourself and also not being willing to accept such a low standard of, of living, really. Um, you know, I go through phases, right? Like after my race, I'm like, yeah, I don't care. I've done my race. I don't really care about anything. <laughs> I'm going to eat and drink and party. And I like not party. <laughs> party and stay up till 11. <laughs> what a wild one I am. I'm going to do all the fun things that, you know, I haven't been doing all summer, right? Like I've been, you know, kind of on a tight leash, so to speak, all summer with my what I've allowed myself to indulge in and kind of all that came off the table and then lo and behold like a week later you feel like crap and then you're like oh well I don't really care if I feel like crap because I don't, I'm not training right now so it's kind of like but in my head and this is our paradigm speaking you know what we're going to go back to I was trying to think of this morning we're going to do cardio so we're doing core today Tabata. We're going to do cardio, four core, and then we're going to finish. We're going to bookend our workout today with cardio. And I was trying to think of what cardio I wanted to do. We're going to go to our good old, faithful, TH, TH jacks. Um, forget what I was saying, but <clears throat> our paradigm. Our paradigm. We have paradigms kind of that apply to everything in our life. Like we have a financial paradigm which is why we tend to stay at the same income level. You know, we get, we get the odd raise here and there kind of thing. Let's go to um, mountain climbers next, just to get a change in position. So mountain climbers can look like this, low impact, or you can do high impact. Keeping that spine straight if you can. Really not a fan <laughs> of mountain climbers regretting picking these this morning but anyway I mean I suppose we have to do things we don't like sometimes right that's life but our paradigms dictate really our results in our life um, really powerfully this is something I learned a couple years ago and I some of my paradigms have truly changed in life and the results surrounding those beliefs, because that's really what a paradigm is, is a belief that something's true when it's not, it's just our perception of that thing. My results in those areas have drastically changed. The funny thing is, I can feel right now, with some changes in my life, some old paradigms coming back that I don't want. So I'm kind of going back to some of the practices that got me, that helped me change. The only way to change a paradigm is, is through repetition. So one of, I, one of the most powerful paradigms that we have in our life is our self-image. Um, like surrounding weight, health, fitness. If you, I, I kind of touched on this yesterday. You see yourself how you are today, but you want to be this version of yourself, right? Like that version is maybe, I mean, sometimes I see old pictures of myself and I think, man, I wouldn't mind being her again. <laughs> um, she was tiny, you know, really tiny. <laughs> Not that I'm not happy, like where
where I am, because I am, but we always, so, okay, so where I'm going, like backtrack here a sec. We see ourselves a certain way, and we're never really gonna gravitate too far from that. Maybe five, five to 10 pounds on either side, right? I'm using weight as a reference, but size is probably better, like maybe a size or two either way. Like, okay, here's a question. I, I think about this for myself. I trained really hard all summer. I worked out really hard. I made really good choices as a, as a general rule. Um, my body changed, you know, how can I tell my body changed? Because clothes fit me that, had, that hadn't fit me in a couple of years. Um, now my race is over. I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm not running, obviously, as much. Not, I'm not working as hard. I will put on some of that weight, right? I look at people who are overweight, and they never get more overweight. Like, they kind of just stay the same, right? And their habits go up and down, but their weight really never changes. So they can, they can be indulgent. Like, why is that? Right? Like, how come they don't continue to gain weight is what I'm asking. Whereas for me, I feel like if I keep being bad, <laughs> choosing the wrong things, I will continue to gain weight, right? Like, I'll get, it'll, it'll keep going. And I think that that is the paradigm because I won't continue to, because I will, I will pull myself back. Like one of the analogies that Bob Proctor uses was um, like a rocket ship. So when they, fit, they send a rocket ship out into space, it has, this is from the book Psycho-Cybernetics. Psycho-Cybernetics talks about, right, like our, we are automated much like a rocket ship. Um, we will, we will self autocorrect back to wherever it is that we see ourselves, our self-image, right? Like, so if you see yourself as 150 pounds, you're like super excited because you got down to 130, but your autocorrect, your um, auto, whatever it is, system, kind of like, um, uh, what's it called? Oh my gosh, when you drive cruise control, it's like we're on cruise control through life, right? Like we're gonna self-correct back to that 150 pounds. If you earn, okay, let's do, we're gonna start with plank and boat for core. The next four sets are, are uh, sorry, um, are going to be core based. So if you earn 100,000 a year, right? And uh, you, you're, and that's kind of your financial paradigm you know, you're, how, how often do kids kind of go and make, earn kind of what their parents earned? Like, within, within a scale, right? Like, yes, maybe kids are doing better than their parents that are doing better than their grandparents. If I look at my grandparents, you know, my parents probably did a little bit better, but not astronomically where they're living an entirely different life, right? Like, that's, that's reserved for, the, the one, as Ed Milet calls it, the, the one that sees a bigger, like Ed Milet, like Grant Cardone, like you know, Taylor Swift, <laughs> went and became you know, a famous singer, her, her family background is very humble. Like, that's, that's rare. Typically, generations are going to be kind of in the same type of bracket. Um, based on their paradigms of beliefs. One of the reasons, you know, kids do better than their parents, like incrementally, is because of the belief system their parents instilled in those kids because the parents are like, well, we didn't go to school, we don't have an education, and we want you to go to school and get an education so that you can have a better life. So that kid is like, you, that's your paradigm. Your belief is, I'm gonna go to school, I'm gonna get a better life. It, like, I, I hope I'm making sense. Anyways. I feel really strongly about this concept when it comes to health and fitness and weight loss. And I feel really strongly that this is what people don't understand. This is what people are missing in life as they pursue these, these transformations, right? And 
it's, um, it's not an easy thing to teach. It's not an easy thing to comprehend. Um, I would say I have applied it in a small way in my life. I've seen it applied in a... The thing is, it works how it works. Um, it's up to you <laughs> whether you want to apply it in a big way or a small way, right? Like, if you're going to apply it, you kind of have the choice. Right, like if you want... How do I say it? If you want massive change or quantum leaps in your life in some way, I, I guess I did apply it in the sense of Bigfoot. That, that was a quantum leap in, in my life. Like, that was not something that was logical for, for me to be able to achieve in any way, shape, or form. It made no sense. And I had a lot of doubters, right? Like, a lot of people that were like, can she do this? Like, hoping that I would, but also thinking, like, it, it made no sense. That, that concept can be applied in any area of your life. I, my friend... Um, who, who taught me all about this, applied it in her life. She's right now a multi, multi-millionaire. Like she went from being a nurse practitioner, tons and tons and tons of education, um, making six figures, so doing okay, they, they certainly were doing okay, to completely transforming her life in a very short period of time, like a year, a year she went from being a six-figure kind of income person to, like, like she, she has been in Forbes, she has been in, like, she, like, she's quite actually, I mean, she got a lot of attention globally. Anyways, I don't even know what I'm babbling about. How are you guys today? <laughs> I, I'm babbling about I'm babbling about my belief in the fact that our paradigm is what drives our results. So, you know, some of you I know have some goal, like Jen Sharp this, this weekend is, is, is choosing to believe that she can go and do a 25 kilometer trail race. She's never done anything like that before. She has that belief. There's no logic. There's no, oh, hey, well, I've done this so I can do that. She's believing because, because I, maybe I've opened up her eyes to the fact that things don't have to be logical, right? She's connected to a community of people who are doing bigger things, right? Like us, like we're, we're, we're a you know, powerful group of ladies, ladies. <laughs> we really are. Okay, so we're going to do, um, I'm trying to alternate up and down. Let's do rope climbs and then... Um, no, let's do side plank. I wanted to do side planks today. Just feeling, I was, I was literally dreaming about side planks. <laughs> All right, side planks. Right, I would never have the belief in the potential to become a millionaire in a year if I hadn't seen a friend do it. Right, so, anyways. If you have giant goals, and there's gonna be a lot of people who are gonna say, I don't know if, you're, if, if that's right for you. I don't know if that's in your wheelhouse. I, that's, that's a stretch. Don't listen to them, right? Somebody was saying something about that. They, like, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna even share this, but was saying kind of something along the lines of somebody being not really built for that. And I, guys, I'm a hopeless dreamer. Like I always have been, that's how my mind is wired. I don't believe that nothing is, that things are impossible. Given the right drive and desire, it's not that simple, right? Like there's an amazing book called, that I need to go back and read again and again and again, called, um, oh my gosh, the Napoleon Hill book about getting rich, acquiring riches in your life. He essentially studied uh, 500 of the wealthiest people in the world to see what's common amongst them and wrote this book and this book is like a success blueprint essentially like you can apply it to whatever you want so you can use Heather for example Heather has huge lofty goals right 
huge lofty goals. There's probably people that are going to say or doubt, don't ever doubt yourself, right? And, don't, and find, find people in your life that don't doubt you, or at least don't share that doubt <laughs> with you. <clears throat> I'll never forget my very first time, my very first 100 mile race. Um, I trained with some friends who had achieved a 100 mile race before, like they had achieved that distance. So it was normal, I was, I was training with people who that was normal. We have to normalize the abnormal essentially, right? We have to normalize what other, pe other people think, that's not normal, that's impossible. There's someone out there that can help you normalize it so that it's not a big deal to you. To quell that lack of belief. But anyways, I, I was also teaching running clinics at the time. So I had a group and they were about half marathon half marathon groups that I was teaching and I was running with them and it was my race was coming up the next weekend and I didn't know them super well but I remember them saying asking me a little bit about my training and said how what was the longest run you've ever done honestly the longest run I had ever done was 80 kilometers <laughs> that's as far as I had run and I was going to go run 160 kilometers and they, and they were like, oh. And I could feel the skepticism and doubt coming from them. They didn't say anything. I went, finished it. And they told me after we were all taking bets just on like you quitting where you were going to drop, how far you were going to make it. And I was like, yeah. And there's going to be those people. Those are not the people that I keep in my inner circle. Anybody who says I can't do something or that something can't be done is, will never be in my inner circle. In my inner, inner circle. I'm not saying, I'm not saying like I won't, you know, like I won't spend a lot of time in their company because there's no room for doubt and misbelief when you're trying to achieve big things. Right, somebody that's like, oh, why aren't you just happy the way you are? How many people say that to us in life? Why aren't you happy just the way you are? You know, maybe they're like, you look great. Why, you know, why do you have to work out every day? Or why do you have to do your daily move routine every day? Or, you know, can't you just take a day off? Or those are not people that you want to surround yourself because they want you to drop to their level. What you want to do is find people doing more than you that, that, that you're like, oh, well, if, if they can do this, I can do this, right? Like, that's, that's, my, my, that's my belief anyway, and that's how you get stuff done in life. That's how you achieve. Okay, next one we're going to do, I want to do some um, rope climbing and start with that. So we're climbing the rope so there's an actual rope okay there's not an actual rope but we're pretending there's an actual rope that we're climbing you're pulling pulling up and we're gonna we're gonna do bicycles next surround yourself with on a daily basis like who are the five people you spend the most time with you change that you will change without a lot of conscious effort because you will naturally take on the habits the beliefs um, the lifestyle the paradigms of the people so if you hang out with people who are wealthy right you're gonna start adopting there are beliefs in life, and their beliefs are different, and the way they make choices are different, and the, the decisions and the way they move through life is different. If you want to become healthier and fitter, 
hang out with people who are super healthy and fit. And you are going to naturally start to take on their, their habits without a lot of thought. Like if you're going out for dinner with a bunch of people who are living a healthy, like you're not going to always be that person that orders poutine. Like I'm not saying you, you have, you, it's just, it's, it's just going to happen, right? You're going to learn from them, right? You're going to see the world through a different perspective. And, and that's really the easiest thing. Like I just, like if you want to lose a lot of weight, like hang out with people who, who, hang out with people who live the lifestyle that you would like to live. Like hang out with people, spend your time with people. And that might not be possible like physically in your life per se, but like what if you, what if you join a, join a run group, <laughs> you join a trail group, and you're now hanging out twice a week with people who are making decisions at least twice a week based on, um, sorry, that was, was it, when's the thing gonna go? Oh, it's my, it was my neck on that one. Um, if you are consuming, think about what you watch on TV. If you're watching um, the Food Network, you're watching Cake Boss, <laughs> Is that the, you're watching, you know, Ina Gartner make, or what's the really skinny Italian girl, make amazing pasta and Italian dishes, Gia, Gia something. Like, you're gonna, you're gonna be eating, your focus is on food. If you are watching, like, I watch, I watch a lot of running stuff on YouTube. Like, I watch a lot of videos of people doing extraordinary things because it inspires me. So now that's where my mind is at. My mind is not on, um, does that make sense? So like if you want to, I, I just think that if you surround yourself with the, with the influences that are how you want to become, you will naturally start to move in that direction. You're using that autocorrect system that we have for your benefit and not against you because it's always in play. Um, ironically, <laughs> none of, like, my friends don't drink. Like my two um, running friends that I spend the most time with, like they don't, they don't drink. And so it's interesting because I love my, well my husband drink, likes, he likes, he likes his beer and he likes to eat. <laughs> and so he, we are a bad influence on each other. And then, and then I have a lot of clients who love wine, right? So like I was surrounded by wine lovers for a long time. I haven't really seen, because of COVID, I don't really see, like I'm still not back to seeing people per se. Heather, you don't drink. I mean, Pam doesn't drink. Kathleen loves her wine. <laughs> Kathleen's a bad influence on me. Okay, one more core set. So we're gonna do uh, Russian twists and let's do our sit-ups. Let's do our sit-ups. All right, let's go. And then we finish, we finish with a core, a core set to end. Okay, so try to keep that chest up. You wanna try to keep in a V formation. You can lift your legs or you can rest your legs, um, whatever, whatever feels kind of better for you or wherever you're at today. What did I say? Oh, sit-ups. These are gonna, these are gonna add up real quick. Oh, okay, sit-ups, sit-ups. What was I thinking? I'm not in the mood for sit-ups today. Oh. So, if you're not in the mood for sit-ups, you can do crunches. If you're new, I'm going to change those on the next time. I can't even. I think we'll do like this. Well, let's alternate so I'm not totally quitting on myself. Don't hang around with quitters. <laughs> Don't hang around with quitters. Make quitting normal. Do you ever notice how uncomfortable it is to, to hang around with somebody that's super successful, that has high expectations? 
when you want to be a slug. Like it's super uncomfortable, right? And, and then you gravitate towards the people who, uh, <laughs> oh God. Oh, we're doing leg lifts this time. Okay, so here's a couple options for leg lifts. You can keep your legs straight. You want to keep that back pressed in. This is an easier modification option is just lifting the knees. My body is just, just resisting to it. That is what it's doing. That's, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I forgot to do my yoga yesterday. I'm gonna do that as soon as I'm done. And give my poor self some, a little bit of self care. <laughs> a little bit of TLC. Okay, we're back to sit-ups. I feel like I need, the other thing you can do for your sit-ups, which I should have done, is you can hook your feet under like something, um, which will give you a little bit of stability in the lift.
halfway through our cardio finisher. Judd Sharp, wishing you the best experience this weekend. I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure the weather looks good. I hope I'm not mistaken about that. But regardless, just remember, as long as you're moving forward, you're getting it done. Doesn't matter how slow, how fast you're moving, move. One of my philosophies on my training runs and on my races is, you know what? Let the universe lead you. When you feel good, when you feel good, move, go for it, right? Except for that doesn't apply at the start line because <laughs> everyone feels good at the start line. The start line, you want to not get swept up in other people's paces. So you want to stick to your own plan for like the first quarter. But after that, once you're settled in, if you feel good, go for it. And when you feel like crap, just keep moving forward. Just keep taking one step. Every step is a step closer to being done. Um, I hope you have an amazing experience. I hope you have, it changes you in some way, changes your soul, changes your belief in what you can accomplish. And I can't wait to hear about it. Message me when you're done. Can't wait to hear all about it. Um, so good luck, have a great day. And to everybody else, <coughs> whew, to everybody else, my iPad is for me. Everybody else, have an awesome day today. Have an awesome weekend. Enjoy this summer weather while it lasts. And uh, I will see you next week.